way too many of us nowadays want everything to be solved right now, and that's not possible. Everything that we do as farmers uh, takes a lot of time. I am a seventh generation on our farm. Um, we pretty much started in this area when this area was first settled, and uh, we raise grain and livestock. We don't really have any training other than what the previous generations teach us. And uh, that's good and bad. I mean, we have to realize that uh, we can't do things the same that we've done for generations and generations. And so, uh, obviously, with the new weather challenges that we have, we've had to adapt and overcome a few different things. Um, so we take the, the information that we've been given from like my dad and my grandpa, and I expand on that, and I, and I try to learn from outside sources of what we can do differently to lessen our impact on the environment and also try to lessen the environment's impact on us. One, one major impact is the farm that my dad lives on. Um, ever since I was a kid, we farmed and uh, had, had grain crops on there, soybeans and corn and sometimes wheat. And uh, in the last 10 years, we've only harvested a full crop off of there maybe once or twice. And uh, he lives west of Finley, uh, about four miles west of Finley. And uh, we contribute that to a couple reasons. Like I mentioned, uh, the increased rainfall, obviously, and then also uh, development spreading further west has pushed water faster on us. Um, so our responsibility is then, what do we do with this investment of this farmland? How do we how do we use it to the best of our ability to create an income, but also preserve it because it keeps getting flooded. Uh, erosion's an issue. We're, we're talking about a lot of different things. So what we've uh, done just this year after it flooded again last year, we planted it all back to native grasses and we're going to graze cattle on it. And that's an effort to maybe try to cure the ground a little bit maybe allow it to drain better after it's been back to grass for a few years. But also, it's our really only way to create an income off of it. We do have history. We do understand the way water lays. We do understand um, the time that it takes to uh, fix these things and, and to deal with them and adapt to them. And uh, I think that we, we just can't go and plant a house with a basement or a subdivision in an area that's not well thought out and planned ahead of time because we've seen the impacts that that presents. Some of the improvements, uh, in my opinion, have worked. Uh, this year we've had a lot of rainfall and I don't know the exact specifics without reading back on them, but I do believe that there was a 12 month span where we've had the most recorded rainfall uh, in any 12 month span. During that time, I don't remember seeing significant flooding in Finley. I don't remember seeing uh, water staying for a long period of time. The Tawa Creek is right down the road from my house and um, it used to be that it would rain a lot and it would come up really, really fast and it would take forever to go back down. But <clears throat> this year, it, it has come up and gone down in the same amount of time. So I think that some of the things have improved. Um, but uh, I also believe in the fact that we haven't done major alterations to it. We've done what we can with what God already placed there, which is the river. Let's maintain the river, let's keep it clean. And uh, that's about the best we can do. Because as you mentioned, we, we do live in the Black Swamp. And if you, if you came to visit here about 200 years ago, it would all be wet and flooded anyway. So we've already made it better. I don't know how much better we can make it. We just have to be smart about our planning and where we do things, and, and uh, I think it'll pay off. I, I mean, I'd love for our farm to carry on to the eighth generation, um, but uh, a couple things have to happen. Uh, first off, I need to not pressure my kids one way or another. Uh, they need to make that decision on their own. That's what my dad did for me. But I also have to make sacrifices in my lifetime to be able to uh, make uh, 
an opportunity for them. And those sacrifices might be realizing that we have a different uh, beast that we're trying to tame as far as the weather and the flooding issues and uh, environmental concerns. And I have to, to meet those challenges head on or it's not going to be available for my kids to take over. Um, we're not a, a huge farming operation, but we're not small. I mean, we're able to, to draw two incomes off of it right now. But all these changes and new regulations cost money. And uh, for us to, to carry on and, and pro provide another income for a future generation, we really have to figure out how we're going to adapt and make that happen.